It's been more than a month since renowned academic and playwright Professor John Pepper Clark died. Just like when he was alive, the man is still being celebrated on different platforms for just not his brilliance and academic acumen, but also for the depth and impact of his works on students of humanity, fellow scholars and society in general. We're now being joined for a chat on this and a lot more by Sam Omasheye, a journalist and newspaper editor. Good morning, sir. Welcome to the program. The Big Sam. The Big Sam. Hello. Sam Omasheye, can you hear us from the studio here? Hello. Hello? Sam Omashe. Yeah. Yes, can you hear me? You have to especially wear your Niger Delta regalia. <laughs> anyway, it's good to have well, you. Well, in, in, in the spirit of um, J.P. Clark, I should. Yes, okay, well, it's good to have you on the program very quickly. Uh, yesterday, uh, the uh, Old Boys uh, Association of the uh, Government College, Ugeli, uh, of which you are the president of the Lagos branch, held a memorial location in honor of uh, late Professor J.P. Clark, one of the many greats that uh, government uh, college Ugeli produced. Class of 1948, right? Correct, right? Yes. Is, is there that yes. brother, uh, Ambassador Porode Clark was in the class of 1947. Yes. Uh, Correct. Would you like to tell us uh, about uh, this great product of Government College, uh, Ugeli, who went on to establish himself as a world literary figure and one of the uh, three great originals uh, of modern literature uh, in Nigeria? His essence, his achievements, his significance. Well, uh, thank you very much, Ruben. Um, let me say it's. Uh, uh, people say he's uh, one of the great three. Uh, I would say, as some of some others have said, is one of the quartet. That is if we if we bring in um, the poet Okibo to the to the mix. Um, that's you have Achebe, you have uh, Shoinka, of course, and also you have um, um, J.P. Clark and Okibo, the four of them. Well, J.P. Clark, interestingly. I did not know that he was a, an old boy of a government college, really, until um, I'd left Ife. Uh, we read his works like uh, Streamside Exchange, uh, Badon, and a few other poems. Uh, we're not really sure that I was not really sure that this man had anything to do with Ugeli. Eventually, though, I came to learn of him um, when I was. Uh, attending one of the old boys uh, associations uh, meetings when I was um, looking for a job in the 1980s. Uh, so that was it. And the interesting thing about J.P. Clark is that it's a, it's a story of somebody who knew what he wanted to do very early. In his days in Government College Ugeli, he was exchanging books from the then principal of Government College Ugeli. And any book that um, came on the market, any literary work, the principal will exchange it with J.P. Clark until J.P. Clark himself got to Ibadan and he started to see that he had begun to board as a writer. And that is the J.P. Clark we know today, who has written so much work in terms of um, um, drama and also in terms of poetry. Uh, he also, also did some work of prose, very acerbic work of prose, America, the America. America. Well, yeah. So it's, it's done quite it's done quite a bit. Um, you have called him a world-renowned poet. Uh, as I said yesterday at the um, at the memorial we held for him, uh, I said uh, J.P. Clark was one of the least of the four in terms of the realization of his talent and and his obey. He, he did much more and got much more accolade on the world stage than he than he got. And I hope that we get it much better um, as time goes on. But he might not live 
to see it. I think, I think that what happened to J.P. Clark was that a lot of critics impose their own temperament, their own sense of his own personality on his works. So because they did not get along very well with J.P. Clark, it also tended to subdue his luminosity on the world stage because people did not want to sell a person they did not like, which, which is quite unfortunate in Europe and in the United, in the United States. Figures that critics did not get along well did not really suffer the odium of critics. In fact, some of them blows on. For instance, Apali never granted any interviews in spite of the stature of our, of our work uh, to kill a mockingbird. Kill a mockingbird. Or J.D. Salinger, or J.D. J. D. Salinger in his work, um, Catcher in the Rye, nobody, and a few other works that he did. And people were belly aching over the fact that, look, J.D., J. D., J. D., we want to see you, we want to talk to you, you are such a terrible fellow. But everybody loved Catcher in the Rye, and they put it, they put it up there among the canon. So that is, that's it. But J.P. Clark what did so much for theater. He, 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 he set up his own uh, repatriate uh, theater in, uh, in Lagos and put in his treasure, his time and resources to, to, to do it. Well, J.D. Salinger probably thought the world was full of phonies, like Holden Caulfield, his most famous literary creation. And Harper Lee did say to kill a mockingbird was all she had to say. She had nothing else to add <laughs> until several years later when the sequel was published. But I do hope that J.P. Clark gets all the posthumous accolades because they will be richly deserved. I want to talk about the themes that he explored in his poetry, apart from the more personal autobiographical poems. There was a recurring theme of the, his despair at the Nigerian political terrain and historical terrain. I'd like to talk about that with you, if you don't mind. Yes, he, he, uh, J.P. Clark very early was a man who was sad about the Nigerian project. I remember his poem, The Casualties. Uh, yes. uh, uh, even the, the, the poem, Abiku. They were all more, very mournful poems that tended to tell the story of Nigerian anomie, the, the atrophy of hope, the despair of leadership, the, the retreat of progress, the, 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 the dissolution of youth, um, and the certainty of the certainty of illusion. So those things uh, permeated his work even towards the end of his career. His books, Remains of the Tide, is then the last one, More Tide, uh, More Remains, sorry, were also very, very sad, very lugubrious. They, 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 they did not show too much cheer, even about his own life. He even wrote a poem announcing his own death. You know, <laughs> saying that uh, J.P. Clark, you know, the mascot of all those who are alive, something like that. And he said, uh, has died. And he was still alive. And I asked him why he wrote such a poem. He said it was a certainty that it was going to happen. In fact, towards the end of his life, anytime I talked to him, he was saying, look, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. He said so often, like, look, look, I've done my beat. And there was that sense in him that, you know, I've done my deep beat. But he was still writing poetry. It was his own way to affirm life and even to, to, to make peace with death. I mean, uh, in the spirit of talking about uh, uh, gender-based violence all over the world, I, I think this week a lot of uh, light has been beamed on gender-based violence. In fact, in South Africa, uh, they are having uh, uh, sort of like a memorial, a memorial, I should say, for people that have sort of gender-based violence and are victims of COVID-19 and flags are flying at half mast. And J.P. Clark, too, had, you know, some thoughts on that. A, a book that really was quite riveting was, was when he talked about the wife's revolt, you know, and the rights of women in society. Uh, is there a point where all of this will be reduced to the barest minimum in society? So, 
Well, I can I can hear. He asked you a question about gender in uh, the works of uh, gender politics in the works of uh, J.P. Clark, particularly with, the, with yeah. regard to the wives' the revolt. Wife revolt. Yes, um, in J.P. Clark understood the power of of women, and uh, and it, 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 the wives' revolt was stopping from his. Uh, you know that there is own, his own idea about about women, about women's capacity for for a reflexive a reflexive action against oppression. That 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 is an internal part of of, of womanhood that men tend to take for granted. If man does not understand that a, a woman can take so much. You will hear the result, as you saw in the in the woman in the white revolt, in other in other ways. And it's not only show that in his um, in his um, in his uh, in the white revolt revolt. You saw that also in the song in song of the goats. You know this the, the story of um, the story of uh, marital property and um, and imposition and also even killing. Filial betrayal. You saw, you saw that too. So his own, his own story is that the woman, especially from his own generation, the woman was supposed to be somebody you you stepped your foot over. But he also showed. Right, Sam, uh, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Great. Can you hear me? Like you were saying, go ahead. We can hear you. Go yes. ahead. Yes. Yes, I was saying that the the issue with um, the wives' revolt is about the inevitability of a gender of gender parity. That was what he was talking about, and the fact that you can only oppress a woman for so long, and when you did that, the woman was going to show her capacity for equality, and also going to show up the male hubris, and how hubris could itself become even a catalyst for a woman's revolt and woman's action. And I also said that in his play, uh, The Son of a Goat, where there was uh, this uh, theme of filial betrayal, of woman as centrality to the African culture, Came to the fore. Well, and even more so, perhaps in Ozidi and the raft. But the Ozidi, Ozidi, exactly. And the raft. And the raft. Yeah, but there and the raft. You saw that in the raft. There, there yes. will be enough time for you and I to discuss literature uh, within this uh, very short uh, segment. But I want to yes. ask you uh, the uh, program you had yesterday was under the auspices yes. of Government College Ugeli. And if you look at Government yes. College Ugeli, it has produced not just uh, a great writer like. Uh, uh, J.P. Clark, uh, also great journalists, great people in different fields. I mentioned about yes. Akurode Clark, class of 1947, yes. uh, earlier on. Yes. But that's also the yes. school that produced uh, Peter Enahoro. That's also the school that produced, uh, uh, who else again? Sam Amuka Pemo. They produced so many. Sam Amuka, Sam Amuka Pemo. Pemo. Uh, the publisher Major of General, uh, Van, Van Major. <laughs> Yes, yes. The doyen, the general, the doyen general, of Nigerian journalism. Of journalism. Yes. <laughs> That's also the school that of produced. Which I, of, which, of, of which I am here. <laughs> Peter Enaro. <laughs> Festus Iyayi. Peter Enaro. You know. Uh, Professor, Ishe, Professor Ishe Sagi. Ishe Sagi. And in this generation. As recently yes. as 1973, uh, Charles Edroson yes. And then uh, we add yes. you to the list. Uh, not because you are yes, my friend, yeah. because you are a yes, distinguished you, have, you, also have, you also have, you have, you also have uh, people in fashion, different areas, whether in fashion, okay. in ecclesiastical okay. matter. I, I see I've given you the opportunity to start bragging now. But <laughs> this is a question I want to ask you. I mean, this school yes. that has produced all these great people, I guess if you yes. go to yes. government college, Ugeli now, it's a shadow of his yes. former self. He's no longer producing, you know, outstanding scholars and intellectuals. Because the, it's a victim, like many other schools, of you know the uh, tragedy of the Nigerian education system. Now, what is the alumni association doing to help the school? And what do you think can be done, yes. really, to revive all these great schools, not just uh, in the South, but yes. across the country? 
The decision was reached when another great boy that you didn't mention, Gamaliel Onosode, awesome. uh, was president of the association, called, called him PGWW, President General Worldwide. It, it reached, we went there to, um, to um, what do you call it, to the school. And the school was all run down. We were even doing day schools in a school that had nine halls of residence. So they decided we were going to start very slowly. And what happened? Within a few years, we were able to put in about half a billion naira. And everything in the school, as we tell you today, is in half. State. And that's what all schools should do. Don't wait for the government. Don't wait for the government to help you with it at all. To do their best. The old boys or old students should get on the map and get to work. And what is left now for us to do in Ugeli is to take care of the content and discipline of education. That's what you do. That's what all schools should do now. Because the government has shown that it cannot, on its own, do the things that the schools enjoy, whether it's King's College, it will be uh, Government College, Jumwa here, and so on, or GC, GCI, GCI. You know, those people enjoyed a lot of support from government, but you don't get that today. So. Hello, Sam. Are you still with us? Hello, Sam Omashe. Hello, Sam. Hello, Sam Omashe. We seem to have lost audio connection with you. Can you hear me? Hello? OK, yes, you are back now. We lost audio connection okay. briefly. OK, OK. okay. So I was saying that I was saying that frankly, the school, like by Onosode, when he became president of uh, the government college worldwide, he um, mobilized the old boys and put about half a million, half a billion dollars, uh, naira, sorry, in almost uh, a billion so far. And uh, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Yes. Yes, uh, half a billion so far at the school. And I forgot to add, an old boy, I will, not, I will have not be forgiven to say that the, the, the proprietor of Arise is an old boy of government college, Unduka of Aguina, the prince. Oh, you know? oh he, he's also from <laughs> government college, Ugeli. Very prominent old boy for that matter. He was well known. He okay. was well known all over the school. Yes. I see when you when you yes. mention uh, government college Ugeli, you get excited. Your your face uh, yes, brightens yes. up. You know well. Oh, yes, oh, the yes. people from uh, Igbo yes. Ilini Grammar School who have also produced yes. managing directors and directors in other schools, they are looking at you and they say, "Well, our school yes, is also great." Me. Well, we 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 have to give room for others. You know. We don't have to oppress everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very good to see that you are very proud of your school, and uh, you are also Thank very you. proud of uh, the accomplishments of uh, Professor uh, J.P. Clark, whose place in world literature, uh, I can tell you, remains assured. And, uh, you know, we all miss him daily yes. in the uh, community, uh, yeah. you know, uh, the intellectual you. community in Nigeria. Thank you very much, uh, Sam Omashe, for joining us.